In this video, I will show how to create a brachiocephalic arterial venous hemodialysis access with a short cephalic vein. I have no disclosure on this topic. Our patient is 81 year old with chronic ischemic heart disease, essential hypertension, tobacco use, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, diabetes mellitus, atrial fibrillation, and obesity. He is on hemodialysis via right jugular permacut. In the right arm, the brachial artery and the axillary artery are with hard plaques along the tortuous artery with up to 50% stenosis. This cephalic vein is wide open, but the calcified arteries may cause still syndrome. On the left arm, the brachial artery is clean from calcifications. The cephalic vein diameter is larger than 4 mm. The vein is short due to previous cannulations that destroyed the distal part of the vein in the cubital fossa. The cephalic vein is short and its position is relatively far from the brachial artery. In this case, the cephalic vein will need transposition. We have two options to handle the transposition. One option is transposition of the third part of the vein reaching the artery in the middle arm. This way will limit the cannulation of the deep proximal a vein for cannulation. Therefore, most of the dialysis staff will find it difficult for cannulation. The second option is to fully transpose the vein in a new straight and long superficial tunnel that will allow simple and smooth cannulation for the staff. This is the best way to handle this kind of excess. Since there was no perm cut on the left side, there is no need for venography before surgery. Thus, we can proceed with the creation of brachial cephalic fistula. Regional anesthesia is extremely important to improve outcome, together with microsurgery no-touch technique. In this case, we perform an infraclavicular block allowing painless surgery. We mark the surgical plan and then shave the surgical area. We scrub the arm with chlorexidine soap and then prep with chlorexidine in 70% alcohol. The arm is covered with a sleeve. We use skip incisions to dissect the vein instead of using long single incisions. We start with a longitudinal incision along the distal vein. We use diatermy when needed to expose the vein. The regional anesthesia functions well without pain and the patient can sleep during the surgery. The cephalic vein is gently dissected and the anterior wall is marked and then the vein is elevated with vessel loops. Marking of the vein is crucial to avoid twisting in every step of the surgery. The vein is dissected proximally as much as we can up to the distal bifurcation. We ligate the branches with 4 o -vicryl. While probing the subcutaneous plan with the finger, the next incision is marked on the skin. Now we have reached the proximal transverse incision. We expose the vein at the same technique with Gelpi device. We mark the vein and elevate it with a vessel loop. We measure the length of the vein and mark it on the skin. In this case, we use longitudinal incision that allows more accurate positioning of the artery. We go ahead with the brachial artery. We start with a longitudinal incision with a surgical knife and then gentle dissection of the brachial artery, which is under the brachial vein in this case.
the entire wall of the brachial artery is exposed and marked. We gently lift the artery on two vessel loops and mark the location of the anastomosis for a precise anastomosis. We create a subcutaneous tunnel using 6 mm gore tunnel air from the location of the anastomosis to the proximal transverse incision. We use handmade modified blunt grasper for tunneling the vein through the gore tunnel air. We cut the branches of the distal cephalic vein and then cut the vein and pull it out, while maintaining the position of the vein, avoiding twisting. We flush the vein with heparinized saline solution, verifying patency of the vein. With a flexible grasper, we pull the vein through the tunneler. Now that we have exposed the artery and the vein in place, we are ready for the anastomosis. 4000 units of heparin is given for systemic heparinization before the anastomosis. Three minutes later, with a soft neonatal vascular clamp, we occlude the artery on both sides. The artery is incised longitudinally with an alcon knife and then with Castro Viejo scissors to about 3 to 4 mm in length for the anastomosis. A large size anastomosis is not recommended here and may lead to high excess flow. An end to side anastomosis is performed with continuous 7 O pollen suture. We start suturing the lateral side of the anastomosis from the heel up to two-thirds of the anastomosis. Then we continue with the medial third of the artery, finalizing the entire sutures. First, the distal neonatal clamp is removed, flushing the distal reverse flow in case of non-expected clots. We close the distal artery with the debakey forceps and then we remove the proximal neonatal clamp, flushing any potential clots. We palpate anastomosis, checking the availability of an ice drill. You can appreciate the clean anastomosis. We use oxidized methyl cellulose for hemostasis. The proximal transverse incision in the axilla are sutured in the same manner with vicyl and then dermonal suture. We close the longitudinal incisions with a stratafix suture in two layers over the two incisions. Finally, we close the arteriovenous anastomosis wound with two layers, subcutaneous sutures with 4O vicyl, and then the skin with 5O dermanol suture. In our experience, there is some bleed leakage from the longitudinal incisions when the patients go to sleep. This leads to an anxiety and call us in the middle of the night. Since then, we always apply glue that seal the suture lines. Since then, we all are very happy and can sleep very well at night, and this is a nice tip for everyone. We apply dermacombine ointment on the incision, preventing infection and avoiding ugly scarring that is very important for the patients. We always cover the incisions with an absorbent adhesive dressing. 10 days postoperative, we removed the sutures, a thrill is clearly palpated and the surgery looks good. 
The patient start exercise with a rubber ball five times a day, five minutes each time. This exercise will enhance the fistula maturation. One month later, the anastomosis looks fine. The vein is 5.5 mm in diameter and the measure flow is about 800 ml per minute. We then start the cannulation of the fistula and it went uh, smoothly. Three months later, the puncture sites have developed well and the perm cut was removed. However, the patient complained of pain in the fingers. The flow pattern can be seen with poor acceleration in the buccular artery and the forearm arteries. The vertebral artery is in normal flow, indicating the stenosis is distal to the vertebral artery origin. We send the patient for CTA confirming the stenosis. You can appreciate the severe stenosis near 90% in the subclavian axillary artery. We then schedule the patient for angioplasty correction. Seven months postoperative, we schedule the patient for endovascular intervention, percutaneous transluminal angioplasty. A 6 mm balloon and then 7 mm balloon used for percutaneous angioplasty with good result. We also dilated the juxtanastomotic stenosis, increasing the flow in the excess, make it easier for the staff to perform the cannulation. The ischemic symptoms completely relieved and the patient was very happy with the outcome. Unfortunately, the patient developed ischemic legs and hospitalized for treating the wounds. As you may remember, the patient was frail and with diabetes, ischemic heart disease, and he stayed in the hospital for a long time. He passed away with a well-functioning excess two years postoperative. It can be said that the patient was not eligible for AV fistula, but in our opinion, any patient who has a reasonable prognosis deserves a better and prolonged life quality. At his age, the average prognosis is about five years. Some can live more than five years and some may die shortly after fistula creation. Unfortunately, this is life and we cannot control the complication. Thank you so much for your attention and hope to see you in the next videos.